What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Bright Falls, or should I say Night Springs. And in this video, I'm going to go ahead and do a little recap on the three episodes that we just recently completed for the Alan Wake 2 DLC Night Springs. That's going to be episode one, number one fan, episode two, North Star, and then episode three, Time Breaker. All right, let's go. All right, so here we go with the very first episode, number one fan starring the one and only Rose Marigold of the Oh Dear Diner, Washington's finest waitress, there to serve every single patron every single morning their flapjacks and coffee with a big bright smile on her face and a how do you do. Um, this episode, I think, was largely satirical, right? As everyone knows, it's played Alan Wake 1 and Alan Wake 2. Rose has the biggest crush in the world on Alan Wake. And it, typically, it's just it kind of goes unanswered, right? Wake is is very much an unavailable man in more ways than one. Uh, first and foremost, the guy is married, ladies and gentlemen. And and second of all, he he spends actually most of his time underneath a a lake, in a uh, separate kind of like universe that <laughs> it's not like above ground um so the guys you honestly when it comes down to it he's just he's never going to actually be able to give rose what she's looking for in the real life now the really cool thing about this first episode here is it's kind of just like in like rose's fantasy rose's dream um wake is captured he sends out the sos call rose is very dutifully serving every single person inside this diner by herself whenever she gets the big sos call from lover boy aw and she's being summoned to go in and save him as he's trapped and she is finally getting the call she's always been waiting for and the call that she's ready to answer and that's going to save Alan Wake. Rose marches off down the street towards the boat docks there, pretty much just like a soldier going off to war. I think of Faramir and the other Gondor soldiers in Return of the King whenever they go back to Osgiliath. That's kind of like the treatment that Rose is getting here, which is really cool because she's just marching down the street with like 400 rounds inside of a uh, shotgun and like another 300 inside of her rifle, which again, it's all very satirical, um, very comical, right? We don't ever see Rose really wield a gun uh, in, in Alan Wake, and she's doing it in this video video to go ahead and save A.W. himself, which is pretty neat. Now, this is when you get to the really good part of this episode, when you get to the, the boatyard here and you're talking to this dude right here that looks just like Mr. Scratch does, like the version of Mr. Scratch that Saga fights on the shorelines of Cauldron Lake, like the final like big boss of the game. Um, whenever we get here, Rose has a conversation with him. It turns out that that's actually like Wake's twin brother. That's just like super jealous of Wake's success. Um, so he has him like kidnapped and, and hidden away and basically is like rose you're you're not gonna find him good luck okay and you know here here's all it taken and well that's cool that's fine because we've got about like 600 rounds to our name at this point so rose really gets a chance to just go buck wild laying waste to all the taken just dropping shotgun shells and rifle rounds all over the yard here laying waste and just clearing a path through the woods before we go ahead and get to the next part Rose finally makes it to the final destination, which turns out to be the Valhalla nursing home, as if we didn't get enough of that creepy ass place in the game. This little uh, DLC episode brings us to that point. Uh, I have a little conversation with the deer here before we actually see what's facing us ahead here, before we can finally get these lovers reunited once again. If you thought you were going to avoid a little mini boss fight here with Wake's jealous twin brother, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. As we get up here to the nursing home, just in front of the uh, the building there, we are faced with that man one more time where he turns into a wolf and sends like a bunch of like cosmic blasts towards you. And the very famous and very uh, like overused at times, like the, the, the ground waves uh, that he sends rolling your way. You just got to dodge it, defeat him. And then you're finally free to go inside and see what's waiting for you behind the door on the top floor. Oh, yeah. Just don't forget about the, like the super large woman on the main floor of the building. You are going to have to defeat her <laughs> before you make your way upstairs to wake. Well, you finally made it to the top. And for the cutscene that we've all been. Well, I don't know if we've all been waiting for this cutscene. Maybe Rose has been waiting for this cutscene, which I think is probably safe to say. She does, in fact, defeat the bad boy and make her way all the way to the top to lover boy. A.W. A romance in the waiting for 13 years, I'd say. Super slow run. 
whenever they embrace. It's not a dream, right? And I think that's what I like this I like about this one so much. Is that again, like I said before, it's very much a satire. Like it really like plays on like Rose's like obsession and her like her love of Wake. Like I said before, that in real life is never gonna happen just because of how unavailable Wake is, because he's like pursuing like his wife that's missing and he also is like constantly not on this planet or universe. He's like underground in a lake. I just don't think he really has time for you know a romance with Rose. Um so I really thought that this was just a cool, funny little touch. It was more funny, more satirical than than anything else that we that we saw in the other like two episodes that follow after this. Um so you know hats off the remedy they did a really cool twist a little little spin on this one because the next couple afters do get a little bit darker it was cool that they were able to like wedge in just like a little like a funny episode right and they got to play on something that we've seen from alan wake one which again is rose's crush with on on wake um you know and, and and then we got to see her fight her way too right it was filled with a lot of action um and you'll see this in the episodes coming after this as well i think what they do is they don't want you to focus on like scavenging really as much and like hoarding ammunition and holding on to it like you can like in wake too like sometimes you really have to be um diplomatic about how you engage enemies because you want to conserve as much ammunition as possible i guess depending on what your skill level is or what what you know skill level you're playing on um they don't want you to worry about this right as we saw by like the high high amount of ammunition you had we had a shotgun we had a rifle and we had combined five or six hundred rounds of ammunition um they just want you to blast your way through carve a path and then get to the destination there it's kind of more about the atmosphere the environment um the story the goofy characters like the mission that you're on and you know just enjoy yourself don't worry about like <laughs> trying to find a couple extra shotgun shells so you can try to make your way to the end of the mission don't 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 worry about that they you know they, they don't want you to worry about that in these dlcs here it's more about the story that they're trying to tell and like the 40 five minutes to an hour that it takes to complete each episode so that was number one fan i enjoyed number one fan a lot let's move on now to episode two which is north star all right episode two of night springs dlc is north star and just like i said at the end of a number one fan recap um episode two is pretty much the exact opposite of that not not there's no cheery romance going on here this is very much like a dark episode i think out of the three episodes this is the one that's the most like the base game of alan wake 2 where it's very dark um uh, you know very much a survival horror elements here with the visuals the sound effects um you're back at coffee world which i think outside of maneuvering around the uh woods and shores of cauldron lake i think coffee world might just be like the scariest setting in alan wake 2 I, I again I, I know that cauldron lake gives it a run for its money but coffee world is horrifying and you know now you're here and it's pitch black the lighting's a little bit different than it is in the game um but a, a, again it's a completely different setting than episode one a number one fan where you're just gallivanting around and everything's like pink and purple and, and and red and all these like beautiful like love inspired uh you know color palettes um you're very much just coming out of like the pitch black woods and going into this creepy ass amusement park here as uh as just Faden. uh as i've never played control before but i am aware of the remedy verse i do know that just Faden here um is is the protagonist of control uh and and i think it's really cool that they introduced a character that's not even in alan wake 2 uh you know we certainly get you know if you take a look at tim breaker's uh, little whiteboard there in the dark place we know that uh jess is very much the red-headed woman uh that he references uh as, as remedy I, I, is, is like infusing all of these games together in this little universe that they've made here of all this like creepy supernatural stuff that happens um you know i i personally playing through this episode here really enjoyed playing as jess faden and i want to say that i have control now on my list of things that i want to play here going forward um so that's just a little introduction here for for the second episode here um we'll go ahead and crawl forward and, and kind of talk about like what it's all about here all right real quick i want to bring something up that doesn't really mean a whole lot here in this episode but um it is something that's come up before in the base game of alan wake 2 and this is for all the people out there that aren't math people okay hand up i'm not a math guy guys i'm not ashamed to admit that all right full transparency here no bullshit 
I'm not a math guy. I've never been a math guy. Um, uh, you know, Remedy and Sam Lake, they must be math guys. They, they love their equations, I guess, and their math problems that they sprinkle about the woods of Bright Falls. And now, as you can see here in his first episode two of, uh, of uh, Night Springs, um, look, I'll take a couple cracks at the pinata. I'll give it my best shot. Um, but if I'm not cracking that baby open, I can promise you right now, I will cheat. Hand up again. I will cheat. I'll pull the phone up. I'll Google what the answer is to the test. Okay. No shame. All right. Not a math guy. Hand up. Uh, I, I will cheat. 10 times out of 10, I will cheat. All right. As we start to make ourselves familiar again with Coffee World, even in like this different setting here with like the different, like darker, scarier colors, they somehow managed to make this place even more frightening than it was in the base game. Uh, we figure out that Jess is trying to locate her brother. Um, and it would appear that she has some kind of like connection to her brother. As she, whenever she does speak, it seems like she's speaking to him, not about him. And it's almost like she's expecting an answer back. So she's trying to find him. She's been brought to Coffee World. And this is where I guess she expects to, again, find him. She's on a hunt, very much like Saga's on a hunt for answers whenever Saga goes to Coffee World, right? Co or, Saga's more so like looking for the keys to her trailer. Uh, Jess is kind of looking for her brother, but, you know, they're both on like the same chase there. They're trying to find something. And they're trying to find it by navigating the super creepy amusement park. Well, hey, would you look at that? If it wouldn't be our favorite sideline reporter, Tim Breaker. Um, look, we're going to get to Tim's episode next. But Tim is, first and foremost, he is definitely, you know, a sight for sore eyes whenever you're like in the middle of like, you know, a, a dark, creepy, scary amusement park. Anybody, any type of possible ally out there uh, would be welcome at this point. Um, we're very much used to Tim filling that role in Wake's dark place initiations because he's just constantly in his like little side room there. Got the whiteboard out trying to figure out who Warland Door is, who's the redheaded woman is, you know, is all this really happening? Happening. And once again, Tim pops up here in a DLC in Jess's episode and playing very much the same thing. He's basically on the sideline throughout this whole entire video. Um, the man doesn't like linking up with people. And what I mean by that is like he never wants to like ride shotgun with somebody, which is kind of weird. I don't know if he was like that when he was a cop in Bright Falls. Did he never let anybody like ride with them? Like it's like he, he never accompanies Wake in a dark place. And as we'll find out here, like he doesn't accompany Jess. Like, you know, you'll meet him up, meet up with him later. And he decides to like move forward and act on his own. But it's like, dude, like strength of numbers here, man. Like, why can't Tim just like link up with us? Like, why can't we just drop these taken like together? Like. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to just have like the sheriff of Bright Falls that can just like teleport all over the parallel supernatural universe by our side would be cool. Um, again, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because there is good stuff coming ahead for Tim in, in episode three, but it's just something that I laughed at. And I'm like, here we are again. There's Tim just like randomly under a light, under a gazebo giving us some advice, also spinning us some like really weird like stories and insights. Don't drink the coffee um, without really giving us any type of like reason why. Um, but he seems very, very adamant about it. So, of course, we want to take Tim seriously. But at the same time, it's like, dude, why can't you just join us on this journey? Um, so, again, I thought that was like a cool little tidbit there as we run into once again, the one and only Tim Breaker. After fighting a good bit of Taken and then finding some items that are just strewn about the amusement park, we finally gain access to the warehouse. And as you can see there, we have a very sinister looking mug uh, standing before us. All right. We got to find our way into the office there uh, and avoid, apparently, these mugs after we've already been um, apparently just like exposed to like drugs and hallucinogens and a bunch of things that like prevent us from like, you know, being able to like uh, see where we're going, what we need to do we're making like rash decisions it's it, it's kind of like a really cool like little uh like psychedelic effect that it, that it did and obviously we you know as i said we drank the coffee um drank the coffee we watched a videotape we did all these things that we weren't supposed to do and now we're kind of like paying the price for it as we're inside this warehouse with these like killer coffee mugs and you have to imagine if that's like what they make everybody do when they go in there because they know that if you do all that stuff there's no chance that you're going to make it out of there alive and these things are just going to destroy you and i don't know throw you in there like little bean crusher and then like infuse you into their coffee i i, I don't know if that's like what the end game is here but um 
Oh shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> as you can see on the screen right there, that is what can happen. Those coffee mugs will grab you by the neck and it will snap that neck. Um, so that was, I would say, without question, like the most horrifying thing that happens in this episode is whenever you gain access to this uh, this little warehouse here. You have the, the killer mugs and then obviously all of the psychedelic stuff that's playing against you. Uh, you just got to, as always, rise above the uh, uh, the adversity there and, and find your way, um, you know, actually just hook a right right there and there's a key sitting on a desk and um you'll be able to find your way into that into the office don't do what i did and, and uh take the scenic route there otherwise you're gonna get your neck snapped well you make it to the end of this episode here with probably more questions than answers but again these these episodes here all three of them don't really give you like a ton of answers or anything like that and again it's hard to say if this stuff even will have any type of like place going forward and and you know lake house or even like more bigger picture like alan wake 3 which i would be shocked if they don't make an alan wake 3 someday um but again it's just kind of neat how like this stuff like all like combines and mixes together uh you know the different like parts of like the remedy verse i know quantum breaks obviously like another component of that as well um but again this was my favorite episode here i thought jess faden was really interesting obviously not a ton of time you spend with her um but she's kind of like saga where she's just like really like determined and like task oriented, um, badass and just wants to just like figure out like the truth and just, I don't know, find the people that she cares about and prevent other people from trying to do bad stuff to them. Um, so again, control something that'll be on my list here. Really enjoyed playing. This is Jess Faden. I loved like the really just like the horror elements of this episode here. It was darker than what it normally is. Again, I said it before at the beginning, Coffee World is scary as fuck in the game um and they do a good job just completely amplifying that here in in this portion of it here this like this twisted sister version of what we play in the base game it was awesome cool cameo by tim nice running into him um and again this is i would say the episode to me at least that is the most like reminiscent of what alan wake 2 is all about uh so it was cool to play like a version of that here in the night springs dlc um so yeah that was episode two um and next one here finally episode three time breaker let's talk about it all right here we go episode three time breaker this is a wild one starring the one and only tim breaker and or sean ashmore uh however you want to look at this uh, technically it is sean ashmore here at the very beginning sean ashmore is the actor that voices and provides a likeness to tim breaker and also the main character in quantum break he's very much a remedy verse guy um and this is just a wild episode where he basically is just this multiversal agent of space and time that traverses from like basically portal to portal like you're a spyro character trying to find his arch nemesis who's essentially warlandor uh which is pretty cool because obviously tim's trying to figure that whole uh little puzzle out in the base game of alan wake too um but this is just a wild one here where you start in front of this green screen here where there's, um, you know, Sean Ashmore is very much the actor here portraying uh, Tim Breaker. Um, and then, we, of course, we have uh, the one and only Sam Lake playing himself as the director. Um, this is a really cool episode because it actually takes place, like I said, all these different parts where if you look at episode one, number one fan, you're very much just in the Bright Falls area there, the main drag all the way up to the Valhalla nursing home. Episode two is completely in Coffee World. Episode three, it, it just skips across time and space to all these different areas here as we're trying to find out you know where this warland door uh is basically um as tim's just trying to end him because what tim finds out is that the warland door character uh in this episode here is trying to kill all these different versions of tim tim has all these different variations of his persona and character and his physical being and he starts to find all these like bodies dropped left and right of uh of his character and basically what he needs to do is he needs to stop door from going to all these different places and killing these different versions of himself so that's essentially what the mission is in this one um let's skip ahead here because there's some really cool parts here uh outside of the green room all right the next part here that i really really enjoy is just takes place right after you're at you're in the studio um, and Tim's just navigating his way through the woods that seems awfully like the woods that you get in Cauldron Lake, where he just needs to find a puzzle here. He needs to find his energy node so he can just keep like continuing his journey to stop doors. You know, he'll start to see he finds like bodies of himself, like dead on the ground and stuff like that. And naturally, he's starting to feel a little bit threatened that that his own like version of his character here um, is going to be in the crosshairs of door next. 
you start to get a lot of like creepy, like weird elements here walking through the woods, as you might guess, right, is what typically happens in Alan Wake 2 when you're in the woods at night by yourself. I think it's really neat that you get to like kind of finally <clears throat> look over the shoulder of this man. Again, I know it's Sean Ashmore's version, but all throughout Alan Wake 2, Tim Breaker, as I said before, uh, in Jess's episode 2, he's always on the sideline, whether it's in Wake's initiations or in episode 2 of Night Springs. You're never playing as him or he's never fighting alongside you. Even at the very beginning in Return 1 with Saga and Casey when they're in the morgue, he's there for a minute or you talk to him first outside of Odeer Diner and then you go into morgue and all that craziness happens there with Nightingale and then he's just gone. Right. So like it's like he's this really cool character, but you just don't get that much exposure to him. And they finally thrust him into the spotlight here in this episode, which I really enjoy just because I think he's a really fun character and super cool to be able to finally look over his shoulder, control him, uh, shoot some taken up as him, solve some puzzles and ultimately just, you know, make it through this like super trippy third episode. Tim eventually gets towards the end of the multiverse here as we think that we're getting towards the end of like this big boss fight with Warlandor. Um, breaking news, it's not exactly what you think, which isn't surprising. Like I really didn't think as I was playing this game leading up to this point that all of a sudden I was going to start throwing down with Warlandor as if like you're going up against like Nightingale or Thornton and Mulligan or... Uh, Cynthia Weaver like it just like I didn't expect that to happen it just doesn't seem like something that they would include in like a DLC again they're giving us cool little morsels and little tidbits and like all these like little like nuances and wrinkles that they've created which which again is really really fun um even as you see right there on the screen like they tease like the boss fight just like they did with with Nightingale and, and you know Thornton Mulligan and, and uh Cynthia Weaver um you basically just fight some taken here get to the end and then they have like a very unique and different kind of like little end game um <laughs> as you're faced with all these like different like little uh like little dialogue challenges um again it would have been cool to fight door but again i don't think that makes sense to put that in the dlc just because the way things are with warden door at the end of alan wake 2 it's very much undetermined we have no idea like what's gonna happen with that we can all surmise who that man is and who his daughter likely is and that he has a like a really 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 big part to play here going forward in alan wake i would imagine again in alan wake 3 i would again be shocked if that doesn't happen so um there's bigger things to happen with whirl door but i thought it was pretty cool that they teased it um you know in it and obviously he does all the intros for all three episodes as well um but overall this is a really really cool dlc the way they announced it too at summer game fest you know i was thinking that maybe they're going to announce it in a month later it would come out like no it's going to come out the following day um and it's just very well done well crafted curated everything about it that, that that remedy did is is not shocking because remedy does really good stuff um they're very much devoted to to the fans and fan service and, and giving the fans everything that they could possibly ask for the product is phenomenal again i didn't expect three episodes i thought it would just be you know one couple hour episode but they pretty much gave you three one hour long episodes each all with, you know, different spices and, and, you know, different tastes to them. Again, the Rose one was was very much a satire. Uh, the Jess one in episode two was very much a version of Alan Wake 2, I think. Um, maybe like a little extra amplification there uh, with the... Uh, you know, just all the crazy stuff that you experience like around Coffee World and then inside the warehouse. Uh, and then episode three is fully unhinged here with uh, Sean Ashmore slash Tim Breaker fighting his way through the multiverse here to to defeat Warlandor. Not just yet, Tim. You're going to have to hold on for probably another 15 years until Alan Wake 3 comes out. I know Tim wants his crack at Warlandor. At least wants to ask that guy some questions and figure out what's been going on. Um, but it was a nice little tease. Uh, again, hats off to Remedy. Uh, I'm super, super stoked for Lake House. That's coming out in October. Uh, in October, October. Let's try that again, there, buddy. Uh, which is very fitting. Again, that'll be about that'll be one year since Wake Two came out. That came out, I think, the 23rd of October last year in 2023. Uh, so about a year later, you're gonna have the second DLC come out. October is obviously a great month for horror games, right? I don't need to explain to you, uh, you know, the reason for that. That's that's pretty much common sense. Um, so looking forward to that. We only got about four months to wait, which which is phenomenal. Not not much time to wait before Lake House comes out. 
I don't really know what that's going to be about. We have no details on that. We know the lake house that they're referring to is in the woods of Cauldron Lake. If you recall back to the very beginning uh, and return one, whenever Saga is with Casey down at the murder site, uh, whenever they leave and they're going to go take the shortcut back up to the car. If you make a right turn there, you go to the fence and that's where the lake house is. You can talk to someone briefly on the intercom before they polite, politely tell you to fuck off. Uh, so, and as we can find out throughout the rest of Alan Wake too, by reading the emails, you, we know some, some goofy shit happens there with, uh, some of the research workers, uh, of the FBC. So, uh, for the next one, I'm kind of, I'm hoping for just like one full episode of just one story instead of like three segmented stories, though. I, I did enjoy this. I, I just wouldn't want to see that duplicated again in Lake House. And I don't think that we will get that. I think this was more fun and fan service, uh, with, you know, controlling like three characters that you're just never going to control in Alan Wake 2. Jess wasn't even in Alan Wake 2, physically at least, um, was there perhaps in spirit. Um, so they did a really good job with that. They did a great job, you know, putting you over the shoulder of people you're not going to normally control. So hats off to them for that. I don't know who the protagonist is going to be for Lake House. I have no clue. Could it be Saga? Maybe. Maybe. Or is it going to be like an FBC agent? Maybe it's Agent Estevez. I, I don't know. I don't know. We can speculate more as we get a little bit more information. This was really, really hush hush, tight lipped before this came out. Um, again, uh, they just dropped it the next day, and then no one did that did not get leaked at all. The three separate episodes with the different protagonists of each episode that was not leaked at all. Um, so uh, I don't know. I guess they do stuff differently over there, and I think Finland, right? Is that where I think Remedy's at? Um, they do stuff differently over there, right? If that was in America, that shit would have got leaked. No. Nah. Um, so I don't know. We might not get any type of little tidbits before it comes out, but October will be here before we know it. We'll be able to enjoy Lake House. Again, I'm hoping for just one full episode and one story um, before, uh, you know, the inevitable super, super long wait for Alan Wake 3. Um, but if I'm going to rank these three episodes here, let's do that for fun. It wouldn't be, you know, uh, a video if you don't you don't rank shit. Um, my favorite's going to be episode two, North Star with Jess Faden. Um, again, I, you know, even though I like the variation, you think I would pick episode one or three because they are as different from the first game um, as, you know, as possible. Uh just because of like the nature of them episode two being the most similar to the wake two game i don't know what it is i just really enjoyed it i really took a liking to just fade in the warehouse was terrifying i like the cameo by tim coffee world scares me and i hate how much it scares me but i also kind of love it i guess i just like the pain um i don't know what that says about me but i enjoy it um but yeah, it's my favorite. Number two, I'll go with episode three. I'll go with Time Breaker. I really enjoyed playing, finally playing as Tim and getting and getting that man a gun in his hand and actually seeing him pull the trigger and uh, get him really like into like the action. That was really a lot of fun to see that. And then the travel to all those different locations and settings here in this in this last episode was really a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And then Jess obviously makes a little cameo in his two. Uh, I'll put I'll put number one fan third and and again I really enjoyed number one fan it was so unique and goofy and silly uh, you know again just a complete satire of Alan Wake too but I mean I don't know in a ranking someone's going to be last and again it's it's no shade it <laughs> number one fan I really thought it was fun and enjoyed it but yeah I'd go two three one would be my ranking on this one so. Hey, guys, drop me a comment. This was a lot of fun to do. I enjoyed the hell out of Night Springs. Thanks for everyone that was uh, in for the live streams. I live streamed all three episodes. Um, I'll have the playlist for that in the in the description. I'll have the playlist for Alan Wake 1 in the description and Alan Wake 2. So drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. What was your order? How did you rank them? Which one did you like the most? Um, you know, just drop that order. Let me know, baby. Uh, let me know what else you think about what, what we could be seeing in Lake House. What you guys think about Alan Wake 3? Do you think we'll get it before or after uh, 2032? I don't know. You know, I, I, I doubt it. But they have a lot of projects to do, too. All right, that's that's a different video. <laughs> I'm getting off track now. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And as always, thank you so much, guys. Catch you on the next one. See ya.